become a big player behind the scenes in Hollywood and the technology that made him famous. Besides being Hollywood blockbusters, there's one other thing that these movies have in common. A Canadian making dinosaurs chew, making hearts jump. These are just some of the special effects designed by Toronto native Steve Williams. At the age of 33, Williams is one of the hottest computer animators in Hollywood, and it's because he has a handle on the artistic software like few others. Recently, he visited Toronto to launch Cyber Arts, a specialized arts and technology program with a local board of education. So when you look at this, when you're looking through it, you'd have a cylindrical patch like this and a cylindrical patch like that. So this chunk right here, as an example, would be nothing but a cylinder. Okay? Chunks, It'd patches, and cylinders. That's the computer graphic lingo behind the dinosaur drawing on the blackboard. Imagine learning firsthand how an animator used a computer to bring the T-Rex in Jurassic Park to life. That's what these high school students were able to do at Don Mills Collegiate in Toronto. Their guest teacher was animator Steve Williams. It was his way of giving something back to his own high school. His way of spreading his message that computer animation is about art, not technology. Make sure they understand the basics. You know, don't rip themselves off. Black and white film is not a taboo. You know? You'll learn a lot more from a Laurel and Hardy video than you will from watching Seinfeld, you know? I don't think it's so important for them to know about computer animation so much as it is to understand that, uh, you know, animation exists and there's different platforms you can use it on. Computers are one of them, right? You know, just because you're on a computer doesn't really guarantee you're going to be good at animation, right? Uh, a lot of the good animation actually comes from drawn animation, first of all, and then getting into the computer world. This is just a... This is just a, an outlet for people, I think, that didn't exist 10 years ago, you know. And, uh, and the reason these machines are here today is because this is what's happening, you know, outside of the industry. And a lot of, a lot of the people are having to leave Canada in order to go and do it somewhere, you know. And uh, uh, it's a huge business, you know. It's a lot bigger than going and taking your BA in economics, you know. You will be placed at five times the salary, right, of anybody working at some stockbroking firm in Toronto. Williams knows that from experience. Eight years ago, at the age of 25, he began working at Industrial Light and Magic, the company that made the Star Wars movies. It's there where he pushed the limits of computer animation, first by creating the animated water tentacle for the abyss, and more recently, by overseeing the sophisticated tricks in the mask. Well, it makes me mad at uh, Ontario this place to be stupid enough, you know, to allow people to leave and think that there's no money in the arts. I mean, the entire operating budget of a visual effects company is almost that of the entire operating bu budget of the government of Ontario, right? So, you know, to give them an idea, you know, the salaries are high, you know, and this is what goes on down there. Unfortunately, Canadian talent has to leave to go and do these things, you know. It'd be nice to stick around. So you only actually have to model one side and then it'll... That was a yeah. gum little gum for a tooth, right? And then okay. the tooth is made very much the same fashion. The, the tooth is made up like this, and then revolved around itself. Okay. Yeah. At the same time, it was leaving that gave him the chance to work on the big films and meet the big players, like Steven Spielberg. Williams showed him how he could make dinosaurs run, and that convinced the director to use computer animation in Jurassic Park. Williams admits that it was that movie which allowed the public to grasp the power of computer animation. They're flocking this way. We weren't constrained by the physical, we weren't sort of held back by the physical constraints of reality, that being nine tons of hydraulics, you know, armatures, um, lights blowing in the middle of a stop motion shoot. We just didn't have those types of limitations, right? We're a lot freer to, to do what we wanted. So obviously we just pushed the boundary. Once we could replicate the axion hide of a T-Rex and the secondary motion, then we had it. Then we can just sort of invent the scenarios that we wanted. You know, so we were free to invent scenarios at that point. We can make it do anything we want. You know, we can, as a matter of fact, we can make it do things characteristically that it wouldn't have done, which we already did. You know, a, 
a four-ton bipedal creature would not chase something one-eighth its weight. It would chase something its own weight, if it chased at all, right? It was more of a scavenger, you know? So we invented the rules. We rewrote the personality and the attitude of what a Rex would do anyhow in its natural environment. And what was the biggest challenge technically? Getting it to move correctly. There was a really no reference of the T-Rex, you know, of a large bipedal with an 800-pound head. You know, we didn't know if it ran for a sustained period of time. Because you, when you're working with shadows and specular drop-off and disturbing the environment, you can't fool physics, right, unfortunately, visually. So there's certain laws you have to follow, right, in order to maintain the scale of a large creature. Right, so we couldn't really break those rules. So it took a long time to find that what, the, what that variance was. Right? You know, it took me like two months just to get the run correct. Two months for a few seconds of running. You'd think you'd be frustrated that the technology doesn't move as quickly as the imagination. Yet Williams says he never feels slave to his mouse. He regards computer animation as an art, where the idea always drives the software. But he does say, in some cases, technology can limit creativity. How many zombie kids do you know have their heads taped to a television monitor playing video games? Their whole reality, they can't watch black and white, right? They watch color. Because black and white doesn't fill up their imagination enough. And as a matter of fact, and that's what the problem is. The types of films that are coming out today, even which I object to, you know, in a lot of cases, we, uh, we tend to sort of fill in all the blanks. You know, so a kid's mind doesn't have to work that much, right? So, I mean, the, you know, the big gag that I use is, you know, get your kid's computer and bury it in the backyard and get him a block of wood and a knife. He'll learn a lot more, you know? After going to Don Mills Collegiate, Steve Williams followed a path many successful Canadian animators traveled. He went to Sheridan College and enrolled in its animation program.